Uh, with that being said, we're going to go into our first topic. I'm not going to break it down into subsections. We're going to just, you know, put the umbrella on it. Women's college basketball. My comrade Rudy has a lot to say, <laughs> a lot to say about college women's basketball. All I'm going to say is there's no denying it's probably like the most exciting thing to watch right now on TV is women's college basketball. That's my only only thing to add. Go ahead, Rudy. Go ahead, Nick. What, what, are, you, what are you thinking about women's college basketball right now? Well, um, I thought we were going to start with football first, but I can jump right into women's college basketball. works for me because I've been watching a lot of women's college basketball, and, you know, Caitlin Clark broke the record uh, last, a week and a half ago to become the all-time Division One scoring leader in men and women's ball. So shout-out to Caitlin Clark. She also won her third straight Big Ten championship. Um, they beat Nebraska in overtime, a game that they were down seven with like, a, with like two minutes to go. Tied the game. She hit some ridiculous shots. Her first half was abysmal. She ooh. had four. Caitlin Clark. No, no, she I had, said ooh. Yeah, ooh. she was she was terrible. She had four points at halftime. I think she was 0 for 8 from a 3 or something like 0 for 9 from 3 in the first half. But shooters keep shooting. And she went bananas in the second half. She had 30 in the second half. Um, I believe she had five threes. I mean, some of the threes that she hit were – I mean, those are men, those are man threes. Like when I say she makes men watch, it's because she does stuff that men do. Cause I don't see any other women taking shots like she's taken. It's 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 remarkable to see, to watch, you know, <clears throat> comparing that 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 Nebraska Iowa game and the finesse in which they play that game. And then you watch the next game and um you watch South Carolina and LSU have a football game. I mean that game was a physical, physical ass game. I think Nick actually watched the entire thing because I told him to. <laughs> um, but that game actually probably shouldn't have happened without the help of the Tennessee head coach who decided to not guard um, Cardoso, Camila Cardoso at the three point line with 1.1 seconds to go. Had no one guarding the inbound pass from side court 60 feet from the rim. So there was no nothing in the way of Raven Johnson to inbound the ball. She throws it to Cardoso, who's wide open by 15 feet. I mean, if you wanted to play defense like that, you could have sat on the bench. That's how bad that defense was. And Cardoso turns, faces, and banks a three off the top from the top of the key to win the game. And this is, mind you, after Tennessee missed two free throws with 3.4 seconds to go. So like everything that could go wrong in that those final 3.4 seconds, I mean, that coach, I don't know that you could look your players in the face after that. That said, that game on Sunday was a fight literally, literally. <laughs> at the end of that if you didn't see that game there was a, a, a little fracas I wouldn't call it a brawl because people use the word brawl a brawl is the malice in the palace that was not a brawl that was one girl flexes and this is the funny part one girl flex they, they Flage Johnson Flage Johnson commits an intentional foul clear intentional foul she mm -hmm. grabs the girl from behind spins her around one of the teammates comes and flexes right in front of her. She doesn't touch her. She flexes on her. It happens every single day in men's basketball. And no no. One, nobody, gets throat, nobody gets throat checked. She throat checked this girl. She shoved her off in the throat area. If, Dray, if, if Draymond Green was her teammate, she might have been in a, in a, the other girl might have been in a choke. Um, instead, Carmelo Cardoso basically body blocks Flage Johnson into the ground and the bench is clear, which means everyone's getting ejected. Flage Johnson's brother jumps from the first row of the stands midcourt, jumps over the scorer's table, shoves the big girl Cardoso out of the way. He gets arrested. He's still in jail as of yesterday. I don't know if he's been bailed out yet. I thought Flage had enough NIL money she could bail her brother out of jail. I don't know. Um, but he, he was in jail as of yesterday still from what I saw. Now, what I don't like is that they they turn this into, I don't, it, you know, they turn this into something that it really, like, this is what, the fourth quarter, there was one foul called each way until that play. One foul. And they were hacking the crap out of each other. The referees allowed this game to go the direction it goes. When the SEC allows this type of physical play. South Carolina's physical. LSU's physical. They're going to go back and forth with each other. It also doesn't help that, you know, South Carolina's beaten them 16 straight times. So the last time LSU beat South Carolina, Angel Reese was like 10 years old. So 
And the reality is this all comes from two coaches that do not like each other. Don Staley and Kim Mulkey do not like each other. That's what it comes down to. And you have the flamboyant Kim Mulkey with her wild outfits and Don Staley with her hoodie. And at the end of the game, Staley apologizes for what took place, which, you know, in, in theory was classy. And, and yeah, it was a class, classy way to end it. Kim Mulkey says, I wish she would have gone after Angel Reese. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? You've had time to think. And you go back to the locker room and that's what comes out of your mouth, coach. And you wonder why your players do certain things. Now, I'm not sitting here absolving anything that South Carolina has done or, do, or you know, does or has done. And I mean, Dawn Staley has had her share of controversial moments and things that she has said. I think they're very similar in terms of the style and who they are. But you got to think about what you're saying before you say some dumb shit like Kim Mulkey said. Like, that's just ridiculous. Because on top of that, Angel Reese is 6'3". Camila Cardoso was 6'8", and she's like 250. <laughs> They're not the same size either. Um, I think it's going to make for an exciting tournament. I would love to see that game again. Could we see it in the Final Four? It's a possibility. You might see it before. You could potentially. I, I can't imagine you'd see it anywhere else but the Final Four because I cannot imagine that they would bracket LSU two. as a two seed <laughs> under a bracket with South Carolina. So they'd have to be meeting up in the Final Four. Um you know, if they, and, and, if they do it right, that's that's how they'll do it. They'll have them in different because LSU will be a, a number two seed. Yeah, they're a two seed, so you can't put them in the same rank. And it, and and so I'd love to see that again in the final four. I tell you right now, the NCAA women's tournament has made the men's tournament invisible. Now, all that said, by the way, Nick, we watched that game. I, I this there, there's a reason that men don't like women's basketball in general because when you watch women miss 30 wide open layups in a game, it gets tired. The only thing that makes you watch that game is the rivalry because the skill level is trash. The amount of layups I, I, we watched missed was embarrassing. And these are the two of the top five teams in the country. And that's why when you watch someone like Caitlin Clark, like that girl is just knocking stuff down from everywhere. And these, these, these women are, are missing layups. You're six, eight missing layups. You're six five missing layups. Like, come on now. <laughs> you gotta make some damn layups. Like that, that, but all that said, that that women's the women's tournament is gonna put the men's tournament, particularly in the final four, to bed. It's gonna be watched by 15 million people. I'm sure it will beat whatever the men do. I don't know if you know, but the women's game, I believe, with uh Ohio State and Iowa week week ago b- broke beat whatever NBA game was on that day. I think that's big, you know, but again, does it translate to the WNBA to the WNBA? I don't think so. And finally, the one thing I want to hit on is Juju Watkins. She played like garbage. She played like garbage in the PAC 12 championship. They won by double digits. That's scary. That is a scary thought. They beat Stanford by double digits and she played like trash. So I'm excited actually about the women's tournament, to be honest. I I, I want to, I'm going to watch it. The perfect setting is LSU, South Carolina, Iowa, and USC. If you get that final four, you got fireworks. Okay. I guess it's my turn. I think Rudy literally covered every freaking thing. I don't even know what to say anymore. Like, um, because you know me, like Rudy just said. Rudy said he, he called me and told me the games was on. And I was already watching, by the way. But... You know, when it comes to turns to women basketball, I'd rather go to the beach and count sand to then watch the games, you know. In my, you know, just how I feel about women's basketball, just because like Rudy say, the talent, the, the, the athletic perspective of the game is just not there to the men's side. So, and they say that they play more, you know, technique, more sound basketball, but that's, that's not true. There's, there's a lot of things that go on in their game that just isn't beautiful to see at all. Like, um, so I... Like personally, I had fun watching that game because the US um USC versus LSU game. Um I had I had I had fun. I, I enjoyed watching that game because they went at it, you know, they battled, it was like a fight, it was like a brawl. But just like the talent wise of the game, it was like like Rudy said, it was a lot of missed layups. Um the shooting wasn't good. They took four shots, they were shooting over people all over in their face. 
it was just wasn't beautiful to see. There was no fast breaks. They were blowing layups by themselves. Um, so um, when it comes to the game, they shouldn't even been in that game against LSU because the Tennessee game, what are you doing, coach? You put your head down after and discuss because you blew the game. Literally, you, you messed up the game for your team. Like, y'all had a chance. All you had to do was literally the person, if he's not, if the lady's not going to guard the ball, she should be guarding something else. She should be taking away the three-point line because they was taking the ball out of half court. There's no way in hell a girl is going to throw the ball from half court under the basket to somebody with 1.1 seconds, and they're going to make the layup in enough time. That, that wasn't going to happen. So you should be guarding the, the three-point line or around there and make them throw the ball out, you know, anywhere besides what she just did. You, you didn't guard the ball. It didn't guard the person. Like, two people shouldn't, could have sat on the sideline next to coach. <laughs> like, rather than being on the court. It was a waste of time, waste of – they shouldn't even – USC shouldn't have been in that game in the first place. That was there. But it was fun to see um, what Rudy said, that the girl – that that happens all the time in men's sport and, and they never, you know, escalate to that type of – that situation. That's a darn lie. Nobody – nobody runs who's not in the play into somebody else's face. Usually when somebody gets all jumpy and brawling and oh, in somebody's face, it's after you dunk on somebody or after you hit a three in their face or something like that. But literally the person had nothing to do with it and came into the play on somebody else, on somebody else's behalf. Nobody does that, Rudy. So when you say that happens all the time, that doesn't happen. Not flexing, at all. Ha- flexing happens all the time. Yeah, it happens when the person, like if you're going at somebody, if I was going at you, Rudy, and I, and I crossed you or I dunked on you, then – then I'll, oh, I'll get in your face like Ant does all the time. You said it. You're like, Ant does it all the time. Yeah, because he made the play. Not on my other teammate made a play. I'm going to come running your face. Nobody does that. So Flaugé had every right to, man, get the fuck out my face. Who the fuck are you? Don't run in my face, yo. You didn't even make the play. You come in here jumping in on somebody else's crown like, oh, you didn't make the play. No, go sit your dumb ass down. And I have no problem with Flaugé did. And then Cardosa come over there big dog bullying over there and running people over and she just knocked her out. And I have, you know what? I have no problem with what Mulkey said. I have no problem. She say, I want my big person. You come run up on my big person and then y'all go at it. Don't just where was do her, it. Where was her big person? Her big person was hurt. She was limping off the court. She was out the play and she already had a tech. So if she went over there and did anything, you know, she was going to get suspended. I don't know if that's what went in her mind or she was just like, fuck it. No, she don't fuck with Flage Johnson. That's what ran in her mind. That's Flage. <laughs> she watched. She watched her, get, bro. She watched her get run over and then she walked was, away. She, no, she was already to the side. I knew right? exactly where she was. She, she was, watched. She was standing up. Watched okay. her get body blocked. Turned around really? and went to the bench. So, so what we talked about already before is having henchmen and having people that do all the dirty work. That's not her. That's not her job. She's a star. Somebody else supposed to do that. I don't know who's on the bench. Who? <laughs> Her coach said it should have been her. Her coach said it should have been her, but that's... Should have been her. No, it can't be her. It can't be her. Not in that situation. Said, I didn't say her coach said it. No, her, her, I, 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 no, said it. no, I think her coach was just saying that it should have been another big person because Flaugé is like 5'10". Coach is just... Well, you know what? Five, I'm five, man, Flaugé is bigger than you. Yeah, okay, but she's not bigger than... But she's Cardo- Card- Cardosa, Cardosa is... Six foot ten. Yeah, she's not six ten. She's six seven, six eight. She's big as hell. She ran her over. She didn't punch her. She literally just body blocked her and made it look like she got killed. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's nothing. You can't run up on somebody like that. But the one was Haley Von Luke trying to push Cardoso from the back. The little tiny five six white girl. Like man, are you it was like a, it was like a, it was like a little it was like a little mat on her back. She came over. Man, go sit your ass down. All right? I'm glad that Cardoso ain't knock her over too. Uh, well, I, you know, I mean, I think it would have been yeah. funny because actually that would have been instigated uh, by the little white girl, uh, Haley Von. Uh, uh, you can't, you can't run over a little white girl like that. You know, that's a crime in any, any, any part of the world. You can't do that. Um, <laughs> but Kate, let's man, that game was good. I mean, I ain't gonna lie, I watched it. I enjoyed it just because it was SEC versus SEC, and they had a battle. They don't like each other thoroughly, but the talent wise or the, the game wise, it was like okay. I'm not so intrigued of that part. Yeah, but, this uh, is why I don't watch it. That's why I don't watch it. But Rudy begged, like, come on, watch, watch the game. This is what we got to do. We got to watch the girls. I was like, okay. But um, Caitlin Clark, man, let's go on to her, man. She had a horrible first half. And then she came with like, um, I will watch because of her. I will be tuned into 
um, women's basketball. I won't be tuned into the men's basketball. I don't even know who plays in men's basketball right now. I don't know. I know a couple of people from Florida, um, a couple of people from UM, FAU, and things in that nature. Um, you won't, you won't, won't be there, don't worry. They're 15 you, and 17. Yeah, They're done. I don't, I don't know what, how they came back this year. Injuries and a whole bunch of things didn't go their way. Um, but Caitlin Clark, man, she's a beast, No man. heart. And no people heart think that people who whoever think that she's not going into the WNBA and doing the same thing, y'all dead wrong. You know who that remind me of? Steph Curry. Steph Curry at Davis and everybody. Oh, he's scrawny. He's not fast. He's not elite. He can't. He won't be able to do it on the next level. But when you can shoot that rock, like how she shoots that rock from twenty eight feet deep, sometimes thirty, sometimes thirty five feet deep. That's a threat on any level, anywhere. She could play on at Rutgers Park. She could play at the park. She could play at outside court, inside court, the beach, the sand, the lake, the ocean. Did you, did you see the three she hit? They're down yeah. by a point, and, and this is an overtime. They're down by a point. She's inside the three-point line, like in the middle of the key, like the middle of the free throw mm-hmm. line to the three. Mm-hmm. She takes a step – like she takes this huge step back. Like, it's not like a step back to the side. She steps mm-hmm. straight back and just – and Man. buries it, and they have the lead. This was with 54 seconds to go in, in she, the overtime. Like, that shot's like, ridiculous. She's playing like – she's really playing like a man. I, like, I mean, she's playing like a man. I, I Like, her – like, watching her is like watching another – like, watching an NBA game because she does NBA moves. She shoots from that distance, and she's lethal. She's unconscious with it. She don't give a damn. She Like we said, the first half, she played like – Boo boo, and then the second half, she brought out the Mamba mentality, and she was just cooking with it, like the White Mamba. Are there White Mambas out there? No, there's not. But she was the White Mamba. There might be an albino Mamba out there. Uh, 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 there, there might be an albino might Mamba. Be. That's close enough. So she'll be the albino Mamba. <laughs> but man, uh, that was great to see, man. Like, um. I think like Rudy covered it all, man. She's going to be great on the next level. I don't care what the heck y'all got to say about that. Um, and then I'm going to go briefly into uh, Juju Watkins. Um, uh, yeah, she played like crap. I don't think USC is going to make the Final Four, man. They're just too inconsistent for me, man. They struggle with Arizona. Um, I think both Arizona that they struggle with. Um, they did play, you know, they did play Stanford good, but um, they're just too inconsistent for me. And she has to literally drop 40 points a night. But they did win without her doing that. So that is surprising, but when it comes to the NCAA tournament, she's gonna have to ball. She can't come out there and lay an egg like she did, or they'll be um, going home before the Sweet 16. But like Rudy said, the, um, the dream Final Four, the dream Final Four would be Iowa, USC, USC, and LSU, and we'll be tuned in. And they're on. They're actually on um, prime time this year. They're on they prime time on Sunday, so they wonder, they'll, they'll, they're they're prime time Sunday night. Uh, so you're going to see those ratings be huge. I wonder why. <laughs> you can't name a. I mean, I can name a few players from college basketball that are not in the Hurricanes, but I mean, there's not a whole lot. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing of there's like the Duke North Carolina game was on Saturday. I watched it also on my phone when I was at UFC 299, and and I enjoyed Carolina beating up on Duke, but. You saw Kai Filipowski is now the next version of Grayson Allen, tripping people while, you know, he's oh, taking over that white banner, of, what, the white boy banner of tripping people. I would have fucked him. I would have fucked him up. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Something about something <clears throat> in that Duke, something in that Duke water, man, that just make these players, <laughs> they just got to be an asshole. They got to be a white boy asshole for the, for the like, he, it started. I don't know if it's Leitner started it. It was, I mean, it was Danny. It was Danny, Danny Ferry. Perry. Okay. Then it was Christian Leitner who's stomping on dudes when they're on the ground. You know. Then you had JJ I mean, didn't do nothing. J, JJ, was JJ, JJ was just a douchebag. Unlikable. Um, unlikable asshole. Then Grace Allen was a prick piece of shit, and now it's Filipowski who's taking that torch. I'm gonna be that asshole white dude at Duke. It's a it's a it's a badge of honor, I think, at that school at this point. <laughs> And that's why I All fucking right. hate I fucking hate Duke. I've always I, hated Duke. Yeah, I think everybody does. Nobody grew up in like, oh, I like Duke. I mean, there are some Duke fans, but for the most part, we're not no way. Anybody but Duke. That's that's uh from a scholastic point of view, that's the Southern Harvard. And we're gonna leave it there. Uh for the Southern Harvard graduates out there, Duke University. Shout out to you guys. Grant Hill, what's up? Um uh, Thank you for watching Come On Now, the podcast. 
please be sure to subscribe, like, comment, and ring that bell so you get up-to-the-minute updates when we publish new content. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram at Come On Now Podcast and X and TikTok at Come On Now Pod. Thank you again for supporting this channel.